Good morning everyone, it's Brenda Quintana here and it's Casing Tuesday and that's the day when we take a card out of a catalog and we give it a makeover and it's really great because you can join us on our Facebook group and I'll have the link uh, down below if you want to join our group and share your card with us or just have a look and see what other people are doing with that same very layout. And this month is also World Watercolor Month. Yes, uh, this is, I think, the first time Stampin' Up! has even mentioned it. You know, nowadays there's a day, a month, uh, a year, a week for everything to celebrate everything. Um, but sometimes it's nice to bring attention to certain things. So it is kind of fun. And as long as you don't take it too seriously... And uh, so um, it is World Watercolor Month, and so that's kind of cool. And today I actually watercolored a card. And I haven't done a lot of watercoloring for a while because we have our beautiful Stampin' Blends markers, which I really enjoy using. But watercoloring gives kind of a more relaxed feel to a card, and sometimes it can just be really pretty and romantic and um, so I really do like to watercolor as well. Am I super good at it? No, I am not an artist. I did not, I did not actually even take art classes in high school. I took what I had to take. I was not into art at the time. So I don't have any great flair for um, creating original art, but anyone can watercolor um, when they have a stamp, when they have that outline of an image to watercolor. And I think the thing is for me, just don't, don't take it. I don't take myself too seriously. I, I just try and enjoy it and try not to worry about coloring within the lines because watercoloring definitely is a lot more free flowing. And so I hope you'll take encouragement uh, from me. If you're not, if you're like me and you don't have that you know, art training. I hope you'll take encouragement from me today and just see that you can create something beautiful even if it's not 100% perfect and that you can just enjoy the process and enjoy doing a little watercoloring. All right, let's take a look at the card for today. Let's look at the... Whoa, I've got a lot of things here. Okay. I think I loaded up some incorrect things, but let's let's take a look. This is the card for today, and I don't have that stamp set or punch, so we're going to do something a little different, but kind of the same with supplies that I already had. Um, and I love this card. It's kind of cute. Um, a nice little jar of flowers um, or a bottle of flowers. And then here is the sketch for that. So it's very simple, it kind of has this little frame, a little uh, greeting up at the top. But I'm going to show you, you know, you can change some of those things around. You don't have to follow the scheme exactly and you can just try and create the essence of the card. Use it as a starting point and then just keep in mind that the reason we're doing Casing Tuesday in general is that you have this great all these catalogs at your fingertips. If you have a Stampin' Up! catalog, you have all these samples at your fingertips. So all the time you have inspiration right there in your hands and you can use those cards and take the stamp sets you have or a stamp set that you're going to order and you can use a card, a layout for a different stamp set and use it with something that you already have or something that you're you're planning on purchasing. So I, I hope that this kind of broadens your horizons as well in terms of creating art. All right, let's switch over to the other ca camera and I'll show you what card I made today. Okay, so here is my card and look at the watercolor flowers. They're so pretty and the stems in the water. And then I also did the inside of the card with just a little bit of corner stamping. 
And I think I forgot to put down the name of the stamps that I used for the words because I was like looking very intently on the front, creating my supply list. I'll have to add this um, stamp set afterwards. Let me just tell you what it is. It is called the Biggest Wish Stamp Set. Okay, let's talk about the other things I use. This is the Jar of Flower Stamp Set, and I use that for the flowers, the jar, and the stem. And then I also used the um, uh, jar punch, okay, to create this. And then um, the other thing I use, Charming Sentiments. I didn't use the matching dies for the Charming Sentiments. I just used the Just For You. And then, of course, I already mentioned Biggest Wish for the inside greening. I use the Timber Embossing Folder to create this piece of wood down here and I used the fabulous frames dies to create this frame and you can see if I hold this up closely and turn it into the light you can see texture so all right I think we're ready to get started oh I should mention one more punch the banners pick a punch I used it for this little banner right there Okay, let's get started. And um, we want to create, um, we need to do some embossing and we need to cut this frame. So let's go ahead and um, do that first. And we'll just bring in the stamp and cut and emboss machine. I've got my machine. Base platform number one, thin die adapter number two, cutting plate number three, and I've got a piece of Orchid Oasis, which I'm going to put on an angle, and I've got my frame. So I believe I cut this piece to a four inches by five and one eighths, and that fits the frame. But you can just measure the die and just find a piece of cardstock to run through. If you have a quarter sheet of cardstock, that will work really well. Okay, and run it through on an angle because that way it goes through point first and it doesn't make that big kerklunking noise when you run it through. Okay. So here is, we can throw this away. And if you want to, you can also run um, this through a second time with basic white to create this inside frame piece. Um, the other thing you can do if you don't want <clears throat> to have to run it through a second time, maybe you're making a bunch of these frame cards, I'll just tell you, I just took a piece of basic white and I cut it to three and just a tiny bit over three inches by just a tiny bit over four and a quarter inches. So you just have to kind of go just a little bit over three and just a little bit over four and a quarter, just, just a tiny hair. And then that fits inside the frame because it's a little faster to cut on a paper trimmer than it is to crank something through the machine. So I did that earlier, just cut a piece um, that would fit my frame. But you can also run the die through, so do either one. And then we're going to do, this is the little piece that we need to create into wood. So this is three and just a tiny bit over three inches by three and a quarter inches. And I'm going to remove all of the plates except for the base plate number one. And I'm gonna find my embossing folder. And, aha, there it is. And I want the wood grain to kind of run crossways, so I'm gonna put this through uh, so it's like pretty straight through, not on an angle. And then let's turn this. And I need to grab my plate. I don't keep this plate under my desk because it doesn't fit in my machine when I'm doing it. I have a die cutting station across the room. So this is the number four plate. 
and that's what you use for the 3D embossing folders to run them through. And just remember, you're going right on the base plate. No thin die adapter, no other plates. This is the base plate right here, just no other plates, plus the number four plate for the 3D embossing folders. And then you get a little wood piece that looks like this. So you can set that aside. I'm gonna grab all my plates and move them out of the way. Okay. So we're going to take this piece, the piece that I cut about cut, and that's the one that fits inside the frame. And we're going to take a piece of um, just a scrap piece of basic white and we're going to take the flower stamp, the jar stamp, and the stems stamp and we're going to use Sahara sand on two of these. So this is going to be inside the frame and I just want to ink this up. This is Sahara sand. It's a very light tan color and I want to stamp this. I want to make sure I got a good image here because I'm going to watercolor this. And this is just basic white cardstock. Now some watercolor artists will tell you to use um, watercolor paper and they, they would be right. Um, that's probably the best way to do it. But if you use just a light, a bit of water, this will actually work because that's what I used for this card right here. Okay, and then this jar right here is actually punched out. So we're gonna switch over to Pool Party because Pool Party can look a little bit like glass. Sometimes glass has a little bit of a blue hue to it. So we're just gonna take this, ink it up in Pool Party I'm going to stamp it on the bottom corner because I need a little place to hang on to when I put this through. So this, see it's hard to reach this in here. So you can take a post-it note or this is post-it note labeling tape. I just happen to have this here. So let's just use this. So you can just use a post-it note too if you don't have labeling tape. And I'm just going to put a little bit on this piece right here. Okay, so now I have a little handle for my piece. So I'll slide this in and now I can position this wherever I want because I have that handle. And then you can reuse that post-it note or the post-it note tape for something else. Okay, punch that. So then you just remove that and I just use this for something else later on. Okay, and then we'll put the jar punch away and we're going to stamp the stems into this jar punch. So I want my stems to extend further down. So I'm not going to stamp it right in the ring section. I'm going to tie a bow and we're going to color that with Stampin' Blends. So I'll just ink this up and I'm, I'll show you. The top is kind of level, so you just come in and do that. Okay, and then the bow is going to come across here. So I think we've done that first part of the stamping. And then let's go ahead, we're going to color these. And put this aside for just a second so we I don't stick my fingers in it. This will go in here afterwards. So we're going to take, this is a water painter and it actually comes in a set of three and I'm using this one here. It's handy if you have like a tissue or a paper towel on the side so when you're changing color you can squeeze out some um, some water. And we'll start off, I want to do the stems first 
because I want it to dry because I'm going to stamp some more water. I'm going to stamp some more blue on here and it needs to be dry when I do that. So I'll just use my garden green ink pad. I want to create a little pool of ink so I can really give this a good squeeze. Squeeze it. And then let's open this up. So I've actually also already put some reinker in here. Um, but you can try and squeeze hard and get a little pool of ink because the top of the case is a little bit um, not malleable, like it, it um, can bend a little bit. Okay, so we're just going to come in here like this. Oh, and one little thing. I'm just going to take, I have a little punched shape here, a little extra piece. You can test out how strong your color is here. And I'm just going to come along here and just color in garden green. This particular water painter is has a really narrow skinny tip at the top, so it's pretty good for getting those skinny little lines. But remember, uh, when we're doing this, this is this is not color within the lines all the time. We want to remember that this is water coloring. And one of the charms with water coloring is that you don't always color within the lines. It, it kind of bleeds out a little bit. I am not using a lot of water. Um, my, my brush is a little bit wet already. So if yours is really, really wet, you can dry yours off a little bit so it's not super sopping wet. Because guess what? This ink, this Sahara Sand is water-based ink. So it's actually, um, it has the potential to bleed, but I don't really care if it bleeds a little bit because um, that's just gonna play into my watercolor look. And again, this is just regular basic white, not the thick basic white, just the regular basic white. So I'll just show you. That is how I watercolored my little stems and then I'm going to I could change colors but we could keep going I do have a bit of green on here that I want to do so let's just keep going with this color there are some leaves on here so we'll just kind of add a little green to those leaves I'm doing the bottom of the leaf first because that's where most of my strength and the ink is going to go. So it does kind of naturally create a shadow if you do the bottom first. I'm looking to see. I think I got all the leaves. So I'm just going to squeeze a little water and get rid of the green. And then we'll come in with our next color. Let's do this big area of polished pink because I want to add some yellow to the center. So I I did do a little mm, I did do a little reinker on here, but you can also see how I squeeze some ink. So you want to come in with some pink and test it out. And then I'll, I always kind of go on, do the outside first and then color in. And I'll just hit each of these petals. Oh, I missed a green leaf. We'll have to go back afterwards. There's always one that I miss and I'll have to go back. That's okay. I am just doing this in sections so I'm kind of doing the outside and then coming in and doing filling in the petal afterwards and remember it's okay to go outside the lines and just have fun with it and you know sometimes when I'm watercoloring it doesn't look very good uh, when I'm creating each petal it looks 
and I think you'll find this too like even if you're a watercolor artist when you're done it looks a lot better than during the whole process it doesn't look very good when you're starting so you could do some of these on practice paper just stamp yourself a few just to color and practice first and then you can come in afterwards and do your the one that you're going to do for good for your card. Okay, so now I'm going to come in and do the next flower. I'm doing all of these, these three big flowers in polished pink. This is polished pink ink. It's one of our ink colors. This ink color will only be around for one more year. And I think it's probably my favorite color of pink. It's um, what I would call a medium pink. And it's, I would say it's like a, a probably a very true pink. It doesn't lean towards the yellows. Um, so it's got just a nice kind of a true, true pink color. Working my way. And I'm just leaving the center blank. I noticed that, you know, I could come in and just darken. I'm going to use a little bit of darker just along the edge of my rose. Now that it's dried a little bit, I come, can come along and just darken some of the lines just a little bit. I can do a little bit of dark in the center. Okay, we've got one more left. So I hope I hope you'll try some water coloring. Um, the nice thing about these. Um, water painters is that the water's in the barrel. Oh, I need to tell you a tip for the barrel. <laughs> Don't be like me and get stuck. So I was trying to open the barrel and I was like having really a hard time with it. I'm going to clean this off. So normally it's righty tighty lefty loosey, right? Well, it doesn't work that way for these water painters. I don't know why, but they did them in the reverse. So you have to actually turn them the opposite direction that most screws work with. So instead of turning, um, normally you would um, open it going in the opposite direction. So you just turn it. If it doesn't go one way, try it the other way. And then this is the barrel and I just use tap water in here. It's very easy. Um, and then you just refill it. So you can go for a long time just on a little water in this barrel and it saves you from, <laughs> and then when you tighten it, make sure you go in the opposite direction. It's so hard to remember that, but if you remember that you'll be, you'll be good to go. Okay. So I've got my roses. Oh, I went quite a bit darker than last time, which is fine. And we'll come in. Let's do that one little rogue leaf on the side here. The rogue leaf. The one I forgot. Okay. All right. So when this is finished, it just looks better because it looks like, okay, where's my other color? So we're going to come in now. Parakeet Party is a nice, happy yellow green. So um, it's just perfect to give a different green shade. So we've got these kind of um, sprigs of green that need to have a little color on them, but I don't want them to be, I want them to be green, but 
I don't want them to be the same green as the leaves. When you go outside in nature, walking through a forest, have a look at all the shades of green. There are so many different shades. And um, so I'm just, even though some of these might be actually a different plant, I'm doing all of the sprigs in this yellow green. It makes my life easier. This one might be actually a different color, but yeah, it's gonna be the same color green. So I think I missed a little pink right there. I'll have to go back and do that. And you can go over the stems a little bit too. Okay, all right. So now I've got cleaning this off again. And we'll come in with our Orchid Oasis. And I'll just come in. Just color those. My brush is very wet right now, so I'm gonna just remove some of the water. Ooh. That is very, very wet. I got kind of blue on that. This is where having watercolor paper would be, would be really nice because you could move um, some of the um, color because this one got a little dark on me. But you know what? I I'm still looks good. I'm still happy with it. Um, so if you wanted to, you could definitely use a piece of watercolor paper in this frame. I was just lazy yesterday when I was doing this and I thought I was practicing like if it, if I, you know, was making my cards. So I just used regular paper just to test it out. And then I like, really liked the look of it afterwards. So that's why I kept it. And this is just a little bit of Daffodil Delight. And I'm going to use it for these um, centers, these rose centers right here. Just dab on some of that. Um, and I am missing a little space. Polished pink here. Let's just do a little touch up right there. Okay. So I think that looks pretty good. It does look watercolored. Okay, so there is my watercolored uh, flowers. And some of the Sahara ha sand ink got obliterated, and that's fine. I think that's what I was looking, going for. There is a technique called no line watercoloring. I am not good at that technique at all. So I don't wanna do that. That involves, if you wanted to do no line watercoloring, if you had a little bit more skill than me, you would stamp off the Sahara sand once and then stamp it, or maybe even stamp it off twice and then stamp it. So you could just barely see the outlines of the flowers. And then you would use that as your blueprint to a watercolor. I, I've tried it, I'm just not good at that. So I'm gonna leave that for people that are more expert than me. All right, so I'm gonna need a card base. So I'm doing kind of a, a tent fold. So this is 11 inches by four and a quarter, and I scored it in half at the five and a half inch mark. I'll just use my bone folder to help flatten this out. And then I'm going to take my frame, and here's my glue. Some people have asked me about my little glue jar. Um, in my little jar, there used to be honey. It was like a little gift jar of honey. I think also, if you wanna do this, like a little baby food jar would be perfect size for that as well. Um, and the gunk down at the bottom is just dry glue. Do I cap my glue anymore? No, I don't. Actually, I leave my cap off unless I'm going away for like an extended period of time. Like if I'm, go I'm going to visit my mom or something for a couple of weeks, 
then I will cap my, my glue. But I use my glue fairly frequently, like every day, every second day, every third day for sure. So um, I just leave it uncapped and that leaves the glue down at the bottom of my, um, of my base. And some of it does drip out, but um, it doesn't, the, um, the hole doesn't get clogged as much anymore. So I can just let it uh, sit there and it's always ready to go. So I just glued my frame onto here and then I'm going to take this piece and add it in to the frame. So like I said, if you want to do watercolor paper, I think you should. You should go ahead and you can move the colors around a little better. Like, um, But I still like the way this looked on the basic white. It looks kind of cool. And then we're going to take this little piece and glue it down at the bottom. This is like represents a table or a butcher's block or something. It's going to anchor your whole piece to the bottom. Okay, so we've got this little jar piece and I said I wanted to add some water to it. So the stamps in the jar of flowers, I just want to show you right here. So they are um, you can use the back side of the stamp to create um, to create a solid image. So this stamp right here, you can see, um, is this one and it's this one. So if you stamp it with the detail facing up, you're going to get this look. And if you flip it around like I've done um, to the um, back side, you're going to get a solid stamped image. So I'm just going to take my pool party ink it up and I'll stamp this down close to the bottom and now it looks like there is water in the jar and that's you want water in the jar because otherwise your flowers will wilt. Okay so then we're going to just glue this onto here And I'll just center it to kind of get it where you want it. So there is that little gap space. We're going to cover that in a moment. Let's work on this label here on the side. And I didn't cut my piece, so let's grab that. cut two pieces because I forgot I didn't cut a piece for the inside too so I'll just set that aside so I just have a little piece of cardstock that is three inches by one inch long and I will take my banners pick a punch and I'm going to use this pointy ended banner slide that in three inches is about the oh, shortest you want to make this to fit in the guides all right, so I've got that, and we're gonna cut it down afterwards. We'll take Sahara sand again, and I'll find my greeting just for you. And we'll stamp that pretty close to the pointy end. You know what, now that I look at this, I think I may have made that seven eighths of an inch wide, but it's okay that it's an inch wide. We'll work with it. So I'm just gonna cut this down now so that it's a little shorter. Okay, if you were gonna make two cards at once, I would stamp just for you on both, um, punch both ends and then stamp two times and then cut them down because there's enough room out of a three by one inch piece to get two out of that. Okay, and then I'm just going to add that over here. You know what? 
I wish I had done it. I'm, I'm just looking. I think it's going to look... Oh, I know what I did. I was going to say I, I don't like how this looks on the edge of the frame because it's poking this. But I actually took this out to um, the, the edge, right? And so instead of just stopping at the frame, it right, goes right to the edge of the card and that looks okay. But I think I did this as a 7 8 inch. So you can just slide that in to the inch slot and center it and then punch it. So either way, um, the 7 8 inch one just looks a little bit, a um, little bit smaller. Okay, so then we want to create a little uh, bow for the top. And usually I um, tie my bows ahead of time. This is not a Stampin' Up! product. This is just a little bow maker that I picked up elsewhere. It's a great if you're tying like 100 bows at a time. And I'm just going to tie myself a little bow right here. And grab some scissors. I think I tied the same size bow as before. We'll see in a moment. Yeah, I did. All right. Oop. Okay. So I'm going to color this with yellow Stampin' Blends. I think out the white is just too bland. It does definitely needs a color. So I'll come in. I don't know if I did light or dark. Let's start off with a light where I can always go darker. This is my light Daffodil Delight Stampin' Blend. I'm just going to hit this. So these are alcohol markers. And they're very good for coloring. Um, they're very good for coloring this crinkled seam binding. Also, some other ribbons. They're very good at coloring. Um, yeah, I think I like that light color. So this was my light yellow um, Stampin' Blend, and it bleeds through. So you want to make sure that you protect your work surface with um, something and then to add that I'm just going to take mini glue dots work well but sometimes they don't have a lot of surface area so sometimes I like to just use a little bit of tear and tape on the loops it gives it a little bit more surface area for the glue to stick down instead of just like one tiny little dot which has more of a tendency to pop off, especially I know many parts of the world right now are experiencing a lot of heat. And if you have a lot of heat, um, uh, those mini glue dots, they, they will heat up and they will sometimes release your embellishment. So having a little bit more surface area, like with the tear and tape might be a good thing. So I'm just going to add that onto here and this will cover up the, the rim of the jar and that way the stems can extend all the way into the jar like that. Okay, and so then I just want to add some iridescent rhinestone basic jewels and I probably have mentioned this before but these really are my favorite embellishment because they are neutral. They pick up different colors. They're like opals. They pick up the different colors. So they're really nice. Um, they work on a lot of projects. So they're my go-to. And I like to put them in three and there's three different sizes. So how perfect is that? So I just like grab three of them, three different sizes, and then just pop them on like that. So, so easy. Look at both cards are a little different. One's a little lighter and one's a little darker. That's what watercolor is. It's like, you know, it's whatever mood you're in at the time. 
<laughs> but they're both cute. So to create the inside of the card, like I did right here, let me just show you how I did that. I took a piece of basic white and this measures three and three quarter inches by five inches. Oh, let's take a little scrap piece of paper here too. Um, we're gonna start off with Sahara sand. We're going to grab birthday. I used a lot of D blocks. Um, sometimes I like to put them in on an angle because I can actually see better where all the parts of the card are. I don't know, for me that works. So I'm just gonna tap this. This is a big, bold birthday. Make sure that you get a good inking on here. And I want to put this around about an inch and a half around there from the top. Um, the reason I like to put my greeting closer to the top is usually I write whatever greeting I want down below. I put like the person's name up here. So I don't want to, I want to leave more space at the bottom than at the top. But you have to just think about how you write your cards. You might write them differently than me and then you just... The nice thing about stamping is you can stamp it accordingly. So that's birthday. And then I'm going to take Orchid Oasis and Happy. And this Happy is in the same stamp set. The It's called Biggest, Biggest Wish. Ugh, Orchid Oasis is so pretty. Okay, I've closed my card. Let's use it as a blueprint. So then I'll just kind of stamp happy right across the birthday. <laughs> Doesn't that look cute? I love that. This is a great stamp set. All right, so then let's take our Sahara sand. And this is just a scrap piece of paper. And we'll come back in with our big floral stamp. And this works perfectly on the top of a jar, but guess what? You can take this and just kind of angle it on the corner so you get just a little hint on that side and then we'll do a little bit more showing on the bottom and I'm kind of just going right to the corner and I will kind of angle it like this and there is the bottom. So what I would do then, I'm not going to do this on camera because you saw how I colored this. You just use the same colors and you can color in like that. Or you don't have to color these in. These look nice just like that too. Um, or you could have stamped them in orchid um, if you wanted like just a little pop of, of color and you didn't want to color them in. So just have fun with it. And then I would just adhere this into the card and um, it will be on its way. So that is how, get this out of the way. That is how I did the card. And I think it's kind of pretty and you know, um, getting back into watercoloring after not watercoloring for a while, I'm pretty happy with the results. And is it perfect? No, but watercolor isn't perfect. I think those are just some bright, happy blooms and anyone can do that, right? If I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> All right, I'm coming back over to you guys. What did you think? Did you, uh, do you watercolor? Do you like to watercolor? Um, some people don't, some people don't like to color um at all and that's fine too then if you don't like to color um try and find bold stamps or just stamp your line drawn stamps in color that's okay too you have to do what makes you happy right so i just wanted to let you know that i have a host code going uh, for the month of july and that is to use if you place an order with me and uh, I have a supply list for all the supplies I use today. So if you want to order anything, um, go to the supply list and then use this host code when you're checking out in the Stampin' Up! store. 
And if you spend at least $50 with me, you're going to get rewarded big time because Stampin' Up! is celebrating celebration right now. And that means you can choose a reward with every $50 or $100 you spend. And this can be um, multiple things on one order. If you spend $100, you can choose two $50 uh, reward products or you can choose one $100 reward product. Um, so there are definitely options. And um, if you spend using this host code with me, if you spend at least $50 in July, I'm going to send you the fun flower um, resin shapes in August. Um, those are just kind of some really fun little things to add to your cart. They're little tiny embellishments. Um, so just use the host code if you would like to do that. Also, if you spend at least $15 with me, you're um, going to get a tutorial and no matter what size, just as long as your order is over 15, I will send you a tutorial and you just need to send me an email and let me know which tutorial you would like. All right, I am closing those off and I'm going to go talk to you guys and see how you are this morning. Good morning, Marty. Good morning, Polly from North Carolina. Good morning, Ellie. Ah, Ellie said it's a lovely card. Thank you. And good morning, Dee. She thinks it's a pretty card. And she loves watercolor techniques. But I always forget to, <laughs> to do that. Thanks for reminding us um, of this technique. Well, it's pretty easy because it's watercolor month, world watercolor month. Who would have thought that, right? Um, D asks, can you use part water, part alcohol and the water painters um, would make a blender maybe in a color you didn't have a blender? So um, I think there is something else in, um, in the Stampin' Blends besides just alcohol and, and water. So for a while we didn't have alcohol markers and I experimented a lot with um, different things I did if you look up some older tutorials from a few um, years ago I actually did some water coloring with a glycerin combo um, and that kind of worked out well um, but the thing is I haven't done that so what I would do is I would go ahead and experiment I'm putting alcohol and um, water in your barrel um, it will be fine and um, if you don't like the results I mean you're going to use very little of it if you don't like the results then you can just you know empty your barrel um, squeeze out some water through the the brush and then you can go back to using it as you would before but I have not I have not tried that um, that it's interesting you could you could give it a whirl um, yeah I don't know if I tried that in my experimentation process when I did uh, some water coloring with glycerin. I'm not sure if I tried it, so I can't I can't remember. It was so many years ago. Um, Dee says, it's very relaxing watching you paint the flowers. A zen moment. Yes, we all need zen moments. Um, uh, Marty asks, what are the two line stamps in the set? You know, that is a really good question. Um, I think... I think they are okay so let me just bring these in so those two line steps you can use those as decoration but I also think they're straws you know like um, if you're gonna use this um, as a um, like you know how there you have like some restaurants and stuff like that they serve you drinks in jars or some people even use jars to, you know, serve drinks. I think that could be like a, a straw for your jar. So you could theoretically stamp that jar and like make it like a lemonade or an iced tea drink and then just stamp it like, like that. But you can use your imagination and also use this like as uh, a decorative stamp. It could be a, you know, um, the line like I used this um, wooden piece but you could use it for you know making a horizon for a jar or something to sit on 
So you can use your imagination. It could be the edge of a countertop. So lots of different ways to use it. Okay, he said, I'm wondering if you couldn't wrap linen thread or natural twine around the jar top and tie a knot or bow too for a more rustic look. Do you think that would work? Yes, I think that would work. And then I would maybe, um, instead of just gluing this right down, I would pop this up on dimensionals instead, the jar. Um, the reason it's nice to have the jar for this one is because um, the jar is sitting on top of this wooden piece and if I didn't have that I would have had to cut out the jar so the jar punch is, is really nice um, and you should definitely you could do dimensionals and then wrap some linen thread around that um, the jar and it would look really pretty too. Um, D says, I love how the crinkled seam binding is so accepting of blenders for added matching color. Yeah, and it doesn't really take a lot of color. It just um, it just soaks up a little bit. It's really a nice ribbon to color, whatever color you want. It looks nice white too, but sometimes white is a little too bland. Thank you, Polly. Polly said this is a pretty card. Um, Ellie, I can add the bow maker to my product list. Um, it is not, um, I, I'll, I'll check to make sure that the person is still, she's an independent person. I'll see if she's still um, making it and see if, if um, it's still available. Um, I, you know, I like to support independent people and um, I, I really like this little bow maker. I've had it for a while. Just Stampin' Up! doesn't sell it. Okay, hi Marty. Oh, thank you. Very pretty, she said. Hi Janine. <laughs> she says she's not sure how I missed this morning. <laughs> That's okay. We're all doing stuff. I'm here every Tuesday morning because it's like part of my routine, but everyone has other stuff going on. Um, Ellie says these are the lazy days of summer. They are. It was very warm last night in the house. And my mom will be watching this video again. She's like, you keep talking about how hot it is and you're wearing a sweater. Yes, I know. I Because it's cold in here. Right before I filmed this video, the air conditioner was blowing. I, I don't have it set too low, but eventually it hits the threshold and then it kicks on and this morning it's already pretty warm out there and then I get cold um, because the air conditioner blows right on me from the ceiling and so yeah that's why I'm wearing a sweater um, okay D said such a pretty card and thank you for the watercolor technique reminder um, Marty says she watercolors every once in a while and you can get into it um, and Dee and Marty thank me for my answers to their questions. Um, Dee says, oh yeah, the straws make so much sense. <laughs> yeah, it was a, a, a good question, Marty, because I, I did kind of wonder that myself when I took a look at it, because there's nothing else in the stamp set that really says like drink, you know? Um, and I know like, I like this little lid here too. And I know sometimes those little, uh, jar drinks they even have a little hole in the lid for the star straw to poke through so you could really have a lot of fun with that and um, yeah it doesn't have to just be about flowers the one thing with the stamp set is you need to pair it with a greeting set because it has no words and it's all images so um, you know the biggest wish is a great one for just like your just regular um, happy birthday thanks they're just nice big greetings and then this one is one of our new ones this is charming sentiments it's actually a bundle and these words can be die cut um, all along the little edges so each one of these words has a little die cut piece so this one's a really um, great one um, so you could pair that with the jar of flower stamp set so that you have some words it's nice to have some words on a card you don't need to but it helps to have that as one of the elements of your card <laughs> he says no worries on the sweater I too get cold in the air conditioning when I'm making cards or doing prolonged work at my desk um, 
not much motion lowers your body temperature very true i run cold anyway i'm i've just always been cold um and yeah the i i really try i don't want to have my house be like super cold like right now actually it feels fine i could probably take my sweater off but then the minute i take it off then um that air conditioner starts blowing again and it's like on and off all day long just to kind of keep the the house at a at the right temperature not too hot and not too cold all right guys i hope you have a great week and i will be back on friday i go live at 10 a.m eastern on youtube on fridays and i will have either a 3d or a fancy full card for you i also have um, one more tutorial coming to you this week uh, i will post it probably tomorrow um, it's on my little uh, hippo thank you cards that i sent out for orders last month um, it won't be a live video it, i've already filmed it just as a standalone video and uh, I will post that tomorrow so you can see how I made my cute little hippo pop-up cards. Some of you um, will have received those already. Um, some more thank you cards are going out in the mail today. And I think that's it for all my thank you cards for June. All right, guys. Have a great week. Hope to see you on Friday. Bye-bye.